I'm here to find out what the real MIRM is all about, okay? Okay guys, as promised, I am in uh, Manipal Institute of Regenerative Medicine and I have some students with me in their Masters and PhD and they are going to tell you their journey, their inside story and how it has been. So let's quickly have a, an introduction. So uh, which course you, you guys are doing? So myself, uh, Vivek, I'm doing Masters of Stem Cells and Regenerated Biology and I'm doing my project currently under Dr. Shweta Chakravati. So myself, Janani, I'm also doing Masters in Stem Cell Technology and Regenerative Biology. I'm also working under Dr. Shweta Chakraborty. Hi, myself, Bhavya, and I'm currently pursuing my Masters in Translational Immunology and I'm working under Dr. JP, ma'am. Okay. Hi, myself, Lavanya, and I'm uh, pursuing my Masters in Translational Immunology and I'm currently working on project under Jyoti Prasanna, Dr. Jyoti Prasanna. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Sushma. I'm a second year PhD student from Dr. Anujit Kumar's lab from Manipal Institute of Regenerative Medicine. I, uh, my major focus on this research is understanding the different transcriptional aspects of development of stem cells in neural crest cells. Okay, all right. So thank you so much for that quick introduction, guys. So now uh, I'll be asking you some quick, quick questions. See, there's no script here. I'm here to find out what the real MIRM is all about, okay? So I want to know uh, what if on a scale of 0 to 10 I have to ask you how is the uh, teaching faculty here how is the curriculum are they teaching you properly so uh, basically when we talk about stem cell technology course right. it's like uh, two years the first year we fully learn about the theories basics everything which covers molecular biology and all uh, the genetic part and in the second year we'll be doing lots of hands on uh, experiments where we can design objectives and we'll be working on that. If it's something goes wrong, we can troubleshoot and find some solutions for the experiment. And it's a really very nice campus and faculties are very friendly. We can approach them at any time, ask them any question. So on a scale of 0 to 10, how much you'll rate your policy? I'll rate 8.5 because that 1.5 is a, like the syllabus is a little bit huge and we have to really work hard. Of course, that's a challenge. Yeah. Right, right. How about anyone else? Anyone else would like to add anything? Uh, when I joined MIRM, I, like everyone, I also had no clue about my career path. But uh, the mentorship and the practical exposure which I got here made me choose a life which is filled with asking questions, which is what research is all about. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, as a master's student, do you get enough lab exposure? I'm sure you mentioned this in your first interaction you said that first year is theory and the next year you do projects but during your first year and throughout the process what percentage of your total course is lab and what percentage of total course is theory according to you uh, for immunology it's a two years program and six months we have a theory classes theory exam one and half year is full of research so the full research work is for one and uh, half year okay anybody from stem cells yeah so it's basically nice here where we get exposure of one year learning a lot of things then showing those a syllabus in our project work where we design our own projects and we overcome our own troubleshoots and other stuff. So it's really good. Okay, alright. Now, um, let's talk about your uh, faculties who are here. So I am told that they are also scientists and uh, in their free time they teach you of course but uh, they are also doing their, their own research here, right? So, uh, how do you think that helps you compared to any other college? Because other places you will have find professors, not scientists. Here you have scientists who are also professors. So, what's the difference or what's the benefit of this kind of a system here? Yeah, PhD student. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, when we think about from the research aspect, like me being a second year PhD student, they begin teaching from the research papers itself, not like a classic textbook as I've heard from other students here as well. So, for example, if uh, they're talking about stem cells or different how the stem cells are programmed in general. So, they teach from the research paper which are published in the recent years rather than the textbook which has been the same for the last 10 years. So, in this way, them being scientists or being in the academia helps a lot. And it's it's been like giving the training from day one itself rather than, you know, understanding theory in different uh, perspective and then research in different perspective it's like the merge of 
both together and somewhere from in between we are learning like we are we are our idea from day one is to be think like scientists not a uh, theory separate or ex- experiments are separate or such that right so basically they are helping you inculcate scientific thinking yeah now if i have to compare when you joined this college like you were not at all uh, you were a bachelor bachelor student and when you you have now completed at least one and a half year or one year here right so how do you think you transitioned as a professional here as a biotech professional what is your so it's like in my bachelor's i was not sure how to read a research paper after coming here we have something called as departmental jc where all the phd scholars present one of the trending paper or which was published recently so it was like first we observed how they pre- present how the slides are prepared in our master first years also uh, they taught how should we read an abstract how a paper should be learnt like word by word what was their research thought process and nowadays we, we when we present our data it was very helpful that we are not copying some basic uh, concepts from the textbooks it's like our slides can also be made professional even as a masters we can also make a professional slides i can see the personality of the master students i really see generally the master students who don't open up and talk but i can see you guys are really bold and so i'm sure the presentation skills also has improved yeah, yeah. communication skills soft skills are they helping you on that yeah, yeah. how about team work as a team do you work yeah it's really important to work as a team and one more thing is if she is doing any phd learning some other topic is also really important because how she can relate with some other project and do the same thing which is what we are learning here it's really nice so while you are in phd you also get to interact with a lot of phd students MSc and PhD both, right? So how so this works here is uh, we also have a lot of uh, inter uh, lab collaborations, right? Where, for example, if our lab is expertise in one and the other lab is expert in something else, so we take help of each other, right? So we also get to learn what they are doing. So it's not like we are very restricted to one area of research. We deal with different types of cell cultures. We deal with molecular biology, you know, molecular cloning. and uh, very recently it been uh, drosophila has been introduced in our institute and when we come across what experiments they are doing and we do get very curious about different things so we do ask them what is it they are doing because since it's a very different model system and uh, so yeah like the lot of uh, interlabs uh, discussions which goes on during departmental uh, journal club like she mentioned and we also have collaborations going on with different labs so it's not like we are very restricted to our own research or our own topic but there's a lot of discussions between different topics right uh in general okay so having said that um, uh, some of you have done your masters project here would you like to showcase that to us you can show us what exactly you have done yeah so in the lab can we go to the lab and see my project is focused on mainly a gene called prip which encodes a protein called as aquaporin when it binds to aquaporin it releases a molecule called ros this ros enters inside the body and wherever there is injury or some other thing this ros helps in accumulating and uh, showing its role this is what i'm basically working on wonderful how about you yeah so you can so, see that this master students are so confident in their yeah so this is one of the poster from our previous uh, jrf who was working like this is mostly related to what i am working also i am currently working with a concept known as innate immune priming so uh, i deal with few gram positive back, uh, negative bacteria and fungi and uh, injecting a small dose of those pathogen into drosophila and checking whether that can cause them uh, priming response whether that can create them any memory and protect them from further or future infections like same as what we have vaccine but it's not more of vaccine it is a, a different concept known as innate immune priming we have like i used to de- represent my data using a uh, graph pad we use survival assays to represent how we um, got the results in our work okay. Okay. anyone else would like to talk as i told before i am working under jyoti ma'am and my project basically uh, it is on angiogenesis we learned all the basic techniques in the in this 6 month of my second semester i am learning all the basic techniques like uh, the hands on on my transformation and cloning and uh, the pcrs and all the techniques which will equip me for my future project 
as i told you i am also working under dr jyoti ma'am's lab and i am working on a project uh, where we look at the different isoforms of uh, a gene uh, in a tumor micro environment uh, and we are uh, in this six months we have learned about uh, all the basic techniques that we need to be uh, experts in whatever we are uh, doing or learning yeah so as i mentioned before i'm from dr anujit kumar's lab our lab focuses on two different things one is neurobiology where we are understanding a transcription factor called zik3 and how that uh, transcription factor regulate different uh, derm lineages and specifically in uh, ectoderm how is it helpful in dopaminergic neurons and particularly in my project i'm understanding how this gene plays a role in the development of neural crest cells and also our lab uh, particularly works on the proteasomal degradation system and uh, we also see how the ubiquitin proteasome system also plays an unconventional role other than just the degradation system how it helps in uh, fate specification in different uh, derm lineages thank you okay wonderful so as you can see here the masters and phd students are really doing some amazing work if you want to be a part of this vibrant research community then you can take admission in their masters program for stem cells translational immunology and neurology and definitely you will get a chance to work with these great minds and become a great scientist all the best which will not just make you future ready for the um, for stem cells but actually will make you a complete biotechnologist